Hi, I'm Julie Whitmer, and I live and work on the traditional her- territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. I've been making maps with my own company since 2013. The maps I design are primarily for print, although there have been some exceptions, and I've recently started adding maps to Avenza Maps. I have some local park facilities maps in my Avenza Maps vendor page. What prompted me to create these was when my nephews were younger in baseball leagues. It was difficult to find the right ballpark. Google Maps doesn't always label the diamond, and I had to search for a while to find a City of Waterloo PDF map that shows the the, uh, ball diamond numbers. So I created these facility maps that show sports fields, ball diamonds, picnic areas, public washrooms, trails, and more. And then I started to wonder if other people might find them useful. So I created my vendor page and added a few maps there. I use primarily OSM data and supplement that with local municipal data sets where necessary. I have a source illustrator file that has most of the base data and I added artboards for most of the major parks. Then I save artboards to separate files and edit each file. So far, I've only managed seven, I've only mapped seven of the largest parks in the region and have at least a dozen more in the works whenever I get some time. And as I design each map, some had facilities that weren't on any previous maps, so I started adding that info. I added points that are important to me when biking and thought would be important for people wanting to explore the parks or spend time there with their families. I live in southwest Kitchener, surrounded by Huma Watson Park, with lots of trails and the Grand River. The trail along the park, along the river, is very busy on beautiful days. And so in the pandemic, I want to spend I spent more time in the small forested area between Arrowhead, Crescent, and Dune. And some of the minor trails there weren't on any map. Uh, and a couple of the major ones marked on maps didn't actually exist. So I used Avenza maps to track the routes as I, as I walked them. And I also noticed some information boards there, so I started to plot those in the app. I haven't updated the live map yet. In the screenshot from the app, the top center, the yellow and black lines are two of the five trail data sets for the region, and the orange line is my own track recorded in the app. I was recently contacted by a professor who used this Riverside Park map every week while researching a book he's writing with his PhD students. The book is about strategic development planning and winter park use, and he found the map very helpful and wanted to include it in his book. So I sent him a print quality version of it, and he'll send me a copy of the book as soon as it's published. Recently, I started mentioning Avenza maps to my uh, cycling and tourism map clients. Many of them haven't heard of the app, and they're intrigued when I tell them about it. So I offer to add their map to my vendor page if they want. The city of Guelph was the first to take me up on my offer, and their cycling map is available in the app, as well as being a print brochure and a PDF on their website. They have a great active transportation network, and was the first cycling map I've seen that included hazard symbols for rail crossings and uh, indicators for steep hills. They approached me a couple of years ago to edit their existing cycling map, so most of the design was already established. But I made some minor design changes, added new infrastructure categories, and added the downtown inset map. The city of Burlington approached me to edit their existing cycling maps by updating the cycling infrastructure, adding some new rural routes, and updating and designing new panels for their for their folding map, and adding an inset map. Once I told them about Guelph's cycling map in the app, they loved the idea of having a map available there, too. It's also available as a print brochure, PDF on their website, and they also have an interactive cycling map of GeoStreets. I really love that they're making the map available in as many places as possible for a variety of audiences. I created the Mississauga cycling map back in 2017, and I've updated it a couple of times since then. Last year, someone from Avenza Maps contacted me because they received a request to have the map added to the app. So I put them in touch with Mississauga's project coordinator for the cycling map and noticed it's been added to the app the north and south uh, maps separately and as a bundle. The Monterio Fire Protection District wanted a large wall map as a gift for their chief. A customized map with similar content is the USGS topple map. It's important to show all roads, rivers, creeks, fire hydrants, lookout towers, etc. I was unable to obtain use of local fire hydrant data, so my clients plotted the points on a Google map, sent me a screenshot, and I plotted those in Map Publisher. The wall map is printed on vinyl and displayed in their headquarters, and I added the map to my vendor page with a private link for their use. It's not a public map. Beach 5 rents golf carts and e-bikes in Carlsbad, California. 
they wanted a map to show where the carts and bikes were permitted to be used from Encinitas up to Oceanside. It was to show those zones and points of interest they thought might interest their customers. The map is poster size, letter size for them to print and hand out to their customers, and available in Avenza Maps. Once I told them about Avenza Maps, they loved the idea. So I used Map Publisher to create those different layouts for print and the app. And one illustrator source file functioned as the Avenza Map layout and source for the second file. The second AI file had overlapping uh, artboards in the ratios for the 2436 and 8.5 by 11. And I placed the AI source file on the left half of the artboards for the north of the map, and again on the right of the artboards for the south of the map. I made sure that they were sized correctly to have sufficient overlap uh, on, this, on the smaller letter size ratio, and then I added the legend afterwards. Since they got so many requests for maps of the area from their clients, from their customers, my clients wanted to offer as much info as possible, thus all the different formats. People used to take photos of my client's uh, printed Google map in their shop, but now the customers can scan the QR code on the poster and the shop wall and get a custom digital map on their phones. So back to local maps. Uh, I want to create maps in the app for each of the longer trails in the region, such as the Walter Breen Grand River Trail, parts of which are also the Trans-Canada Trail. I started this map a few years ago to play with Natural Scene Designer uh, but got stalled with all the multiple trail data sets for the region, and then I just got sidetracked. So I hope to have it done this summer. I find a park and trail map production very time consuming. Filtering and editing the multiple data sets and data sources and dozens of data layers for each map. I've started to use FME to help make that process uh, quicker, simpler, and I will look into Avenza's FME plugin and label pro for next year. I want to continue adding local park maps. And I will continue to encourage my clients uh, who have tourism and cycling maps to add those to the app, whether as their own pages or on my vendor page. Uh, you can connect with me on social. I'm Julie Whitmer Maps on most social channels. And check out my webpage or my Avenza vendor maps page. Uh, thank you very much, and hope you enjoy the rest of the talk.